Long not gonna use the microphone, I can be pretty loud. But uh, thanks everybody for coming and welcome to Long Island United Hospital. Uh, we are a not-for-profit community hospital and our mission to, is to improve the health of the communities that we serve. Uh, we have a strong commitment to health and wellness and we're excited to be a sponsor of the Red Line 13.1 on July 6th. Uh, many of us are constantly looking for ways to achieve new goals, set PRs, and improve our performance. Whether it's finding motivation to train, grinding through a long run, or di a difficult race in tough conditions, oftentimes overcoming mental barriers is the key to enhance performance. Many elite level athletes use self-hypnosis and mindset techniques to take their performances to the next level. Our speaker, Zolita Grant, is an internationally known speaker and coach. Zolita specializes in motivating workshops and keynotes. Considered an expert in the uses of development of the mind, she teaches the application to achieve the mindset for success. She's a frequent presenter for the Global Teleseminars Network, and she's available as a coach or speaker, both locally and internationally. Please welcome Zolita Grant. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you things that I have a lot of passion about. The use of the mind to really push the parameters about what we can achieve as human beings. I'm always excited to talk to people who challenge themselves, whether it's challenging physically or challenging mentally, being able to really extend the parameters. You know, I grew up in Berkeley, California during the 1960s. And so I have this belief inside of me that there is a tremendous potential in human beings. What if I were to tell you that you actually have the capacity to use the power of your mind to create neurological pathways in your brain that will allow you to align with the capacity to push the parameters of what it is that you're capable of doing? That's exactly what I'm here to tell you. You know, the average human being is using less than 7% of the capacity of their mind. By learning how to access the tools of the subconscious and align those tools with conscious goals and, and desires, we can increase the capacity to be able to achieve whatever goals that you set for yourself. One of the wonderful things that we know now is that the latest research on neuroplasticity tells us that the brain itself is affected by thoughts and emotions. And that when we enter into focused states of consciousness, we can actually put new neurological pathways into the brain. It's like putting icons on the desktop of the biocomputer. So what I want to do today is I want to train you intellectually and cognitively, but I also want to train you in the ability to install applications into your brain, where you will be able to access, after going through these processes that I'm going to lead you through, you'll be able to access those applications and create things that will allow you to move closer to peak performance. There are five steps to get there. And what I want to do is I want to walk you through those steps. So the first step is you have to spend time in the zone. Now the zone is a wonderful state of consciousness that can actually be measured by brainwave patterns where the physical brain actually regenerates and rejuvenates and recharges itself. You know what? I forgot to turn on the microphone. Okay. <laughs> so the brain can actually rejuvenate itself in this state of the zone. In the zone, there is a condition which is called flow. And that condition of flow allows you to be beyond the thoughts of the mind and beyond the feelings that are in the body and to be able to hone in on the ability to focus on what it is that you want to achieve so that you become in total alignment body, mind, spirit and emotion to be able to focus on that goal. Helps you get out of your head. 
and get in to the experience. Now, in order to effectively get into the zone, you have to train your mind. Just like you train your body. You train your body to run or you train your body to swim, you have to train your mind. You have to train your mind by utilizing tools, and the two, two very best tools that I know of are mindfulness, which is a type of meditation that is fast, effective, and efficient. You know, I'm an Aries, so I like things fast, effective, and efficient. And I have been meditating for over 50 years now. It's the only thing I've ever done consistently is to meditate. And tried so many different styles. But the style I'm going to teach you is the one that is very results oriented. The second technique is learning how to hypnotize yourself. Now, meditation and hypnosis are actually different states of consciousness. They are like paternal twins. Meditation is a passive state that allows the mind to become more receptive and allows the mind to receive information. Hypnosis is an active state. It's a state of being very focused on what it is that you want to achieve and then instilling programming, just like we put programming into computers. This is the most powerful computer in the world. There are no manuals. So we are at a pioneering stage of learning how to use the power of this wonderful biocomputer that we all have. In addition to really learning these tools, being able to spend time in the zone has a lot to do with how it is you live your life. You know, getting up early in the morning and getting in the go helps you put yourself into a flow. Having different kinds of patterns that are your patterns for living are things that help you maintain that ability to get into the zone. The more that you really create the framework to be able to train your mind, the easier it is to actually train the mind. So mindfulness is done very easy. You just sit comfortably in a chair. You put your hands flat on your thighs. You find a place to focus on, so everybody go along with me. And you keep your eyes open. The thing that makes this technique so powerful is actually the open eyes. When you close your eyes, it's too easy to go into fantasy or to making a laundry list or rehashing your past or planning your future. But just focusing softly on a place to focus and beginning to allow your breath to come in a deep, easy, rhythmic way. And knowing that it's the nature of the mind to run away and being very gentle and gracious with yourself as you just breathe. We're just going to do this for two minutes. And letting yourself be aware of making your breath deeper. And the more oxygen you get into the lower part of the lungs, the more you revitalize those lungs. And just allowing that oxygen to flow into the bloodstream, to flow into the cells, bringing all of the nurture and nourishment that the cells need as you just breathe. Now take in a deep breath, hold it, exhale, 
look to the right, left, straight ahead, and come fully present. So that will change your life. Okay? If you do this exercise, if you begin with 10 minutes a day, and you move to 20 minutes a day, this, this exercise will change your life more than anything you can imagine. It will allow you to stay more present, it will improve the ability for you to focus, and it will very much support the immune system being able to repair the physical body. You know, the body and the mind are really designed to be able to repair and regenerate. It's only the stress of life and the habits we live by to get in the way. So self-hypnosis is best learned as a suggestion you experience in hypnosis. So what I want you to do is I want you to open to your booklets to the place where it talks about hypnosis. I think it's on page maybe three and four. Okay? So there is an exercise here which is the self-hypnosis exercise. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about a phrase that could be your words of power. Okay, you know when you're out for a run and you feel like you just want to give up, you just want to say, okay, another day. Or when you get to a place where you know you're going to have to push yourself if you had words of power that you could say to yourself that would allow you to feel like whatever it was that you had to face, you could do it, what would those words of power be? And I actually want you to come up with a phrase and write it down. Does everybody have a pen? No. I'm sorry, I did not bring a pen. Next time I will bring in. And this gentleman over here needs a pen. Does anyone have an extra one? myself, I'm more than this pain, I'm more than this experience. Fewer words pack more punch. So you want your phrase to be positive, to be in the present tense, and fewer words are more powerful. Okay, so does everybody have an idea of what they would say to themselves? Okay, you don't need to write it down, but just get an idea in your head. Okay, so these are going to be your words of power. And I'm going to show you an experience now, which will actually create a pathway in your brain that will allow these words of power to become more powerful for you. Does that make sense? So you may have any questions. Okay? So close your eyes. And just take a moment to just allow your body to relax. And take in a long, deep breath and hold it. And let it out with a sigh. And take in another long, deep breath and hold it and let it out with a sigh. And take in another breath into your body and as you exhale, just let go. Now relax your body. Your body knows how to relax. Relax your body. Now clear your mind. Clear your mind and allow yourself to just come to a place of quiet. So each and every time you want to practice self-hypnosis, all you have to do is close your eyes 
Take in three deep breaths and count backwards from 10 to 1. Relax your body, clear your mind, and say your suggestion to yourself. Do this now. Say inside of your head that suggestion. Now imagine yourself being able to achieve whatever that suggestion is. Just like you were watching yourself on a movie. Now when you come back, that image will be imprinted along with those words in your subconscious mind. When you are finished, you count yourself back from one to five. It becomes easy, it becomes effortless, it becomes your new good habit. One, take a nice deep breath. Two, moving and stretching. Three, move your fingers and toes. Four, get ready to open your eyes. And five, your eyes are open, awake, and awake. Okay, so that's the first step. You have to learn how to get into the zone and do that regularly. The second step is about living in the moment. Living in the moment really is about learning how to focus and concentrate your mind. Lots of times we are in lots of places simultaneously. We're thinking about the past. We're thinking about the future. Your point of power is the present moment. The more that you are right here in this moment, the more you can align yourself to step into the zone and be able to become one unit. Your body, your mind, your emotions that are aimed at really achieving whatever your highest potential is. Does that make sense? Okay, so how do you tell that you're living in the moment? Well, one way is pay attention to what's going on in your body. Okay, our bodies have a wonderful ability to talk to us. And I totally, completely believe that modern medicine is a wonderful thing. But sometimes people learn to medicate the messages of their body as opposed to pay attention to them. So when you're disconnected from this moment, you'll feel it in your body. You'll feel it usually in your guts, in the back of your neck, in your head. So when you feel stuff in those areas of your body, it's a signal that you're not really right here in the moment. Something is distracting you. The third step is create great habits. You know, habits are so wonderful. Habits have a really bad rap in our society because we think of bad habits. But habits are wonderful things because they are automatic behaviors that you don't have to plan. If you have habits that really support your ability to move into peak performance, then they are automatic elements that guide you along the path of your life. And there are four habits that are very important. The first habit is always focus on your positives. The more that you focus on your positives, the more it actually opens problem-solving capacity of your brain. When you believe that you can solve problems, you actually are more able to solve problems. So focusing on positives gives you a burst of energy that helps to move you forward. The second habit is choose your words wisely. Words are power. The words that you say to other people, the words that you define yourself, you know, some of the most powerful words in the world are I am. So when you say I am, it's important that they're powerful statements that state positive elements of your being. The third habit is feel good every day. You know, we all have challenges in life. 
But whether or not we allow those challenges to control us is a choice. And there is always something in your life you can feel good about. There's always something in your life that you can have gratitude for. And the more that you focus on feeling good, the more it will help you align with the things that allow you to be the very best that you can be. The fourth habit is manage your inner dialogue. Okay, the most powerful thing that is going on inside of you is how you are talking to yourself in your head. If you hear voices in your head, it doesn't mean you're necessarily crazy, it means you're self-aware. And so if you listen to voices and you have critical voices, you can stop those voices. Once you become aware of them, you can begin to stop them. So pay attention to what's going on in your inner dialogue. And begin to become a supportive manager of yourself. You know, one of the very good things I think to do every day is to do what I think of as reflect and grow. Okay? This is not reflect and judge. But this is reflect and grow. Think about things that have gone on and grow from those things. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. So, step number four. Step number four is find people who support you. Now, when we think about the word support, there are two different kinds of support. One kind of support is called conditional support. And conditional support means I support you if you do what I think is a good idea. Unconditional support is about supporting you. Supporting you for who you are as an authentic person. Now we don't need a whole bunch of people in our lives that do that, but we need a few. We need a few people that we can be completely authentic, that we can be completely real with, who will support us in who we are. And you know, just just like your mother used to tell you that the people that you hang around with will affect you, turns out it's really true. If you hang around with people that are goal-orientated and want to excel, that'll bring that out in you. If you hang out with people that are pessimistic and feel depressed about life and don't feel enthusiastic about the choices that they have, that will affect you too. So the company that you keep will have a lot to do with your ability to move forward towards peak performance. Okay, so we got four steps now. The first step is spend time in the zone. You have to train your mind to do that. Knowledge is power, but it's only power if you use it. And using these techniques will develop the power of your mind, its ability to interface with your body. The second step was stay in the present moment. Learn how to focus your mind for long periods of time. Doing that will allow you to be more able to create the results that you want to create in your life. Our third step was about habits, adapting habits that support you, creating life routines that allow you to move to that area of your own particular definition of winning. When I think about winning, I think that the contest is always the contest inside of us. That everybody can be a winner because being a winner is about being your best in this experience. So being able to really have those kinds of habits will support you in moving in that direction. The fourth step was about the people you surround yourself with. Look for people that have similar goals and those people will reinforce your ability to achieve those goals yourself. 
Now the fifth step may be the most important step. And this is the step of learn to play mind games that win. Okay? We all tend to play games with our mind. One of the games that people often play with their mind is the game of self-criticism or self-defeating. Sometimes people play a game with their mind where they compare themselves to other people and find themselves wanting. Comparisons are always deadly. We never compare ourselves to other people and say, oh, look how good we're doing. We tend to put ourselves beneath those people. But there are three mind games that I want to teach you now that are very, very powerful tools to use with your mind. And the more that you play these games, practice makes perfect. Whenever you want to do any kind of game, you've got to play the game to be able to excel at the game. So in taking you through the process of learning this game, I'm going to use some techniques that come from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, that works on the connection between the mind-body interface to fire neurons in the brain and anchor things into different states of consciousness. I'm going to teach you to in a way that will instill this new application in your mind and allow you to more effectively do this on your own. So before we begin, does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Okay, is this making sense? Is this helpful? Okay. So the first game is the ability to manage your state. So what is your state? Your state is a little bit like your attitude. You know, your attitude affects everything. You know, can you remember sometimes when you were a teenager, people said you had a bad attitude? You know, your attitude really is your demeanor in how you act with your world. But your state is more than attitude. It is also your physiology. What's going on inside of your body in this experience that's <coughs> happening in your life. I think another word for your state would be your mindset. Your mindset is like your channel that you are turned on to. And so your channel that you're turned on to, whether it's Court TV or the Lifetime Channel or PBS, your channel is going to affect your experience of your life. See? In a way, it doesn't really matter what happens to you. It matters how you identify it in your head. You can wake up one day and the same circumstances are going on in your life, but one day you can be in a mood and everything looks dark and dismal, and another day you can be, have a positive mental attitude and you have a totally different experience of that day. Well, you can actually change that state. You can change that state that is going on in your mind, and when you change that state that goes on in your mind, you change your capacity to deal with what's going on in your life. It's all about your mind. So this technique of managing your state, I want you to close your eyes again. And I want you to just begin to allow yourself to relax now. To take in a long, deep breath and hold it. To let it out with a sigh. To take in another long, deep breath and hold it. Let it out with a sigh. <clears throat> Take in another breath into the body, and as you exhale, let the stomach muscles soften now. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. This is the most important thing in the world for you. 
Now I'm going to count backwards from 10 to 1, and each descending number will take you to a deeper place, a deeper space. 10, 9, 8, go deeper now. 7, 6, 5, go deeper still. 4, 3, 2, 1. Relax your body. Your body knows how to relax, relax your body. Begin to imagine a soft, warm shower of water washing down upon you as you relax your scalp, your forehead, and your jaw. Relaxing the cheeks and the ears, relaxing the eyes, feel those eyes. Go deeper now, much deeper. Relaxing the eyelids and eyelashes and eyebrows, and the muscles and tissues around your eyes and even your eyeballs. Go deeper now, much deeper. That gentle wave of water washes down upon you as you relax your neck and your shoulders. You relax your arms and your hands. You relax your hips now, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your feet, your toes. The body knows. The body knows how to do this. The body does this now. Go deeper now. Much deeper. Now go to your mind. Ten, nine, eight. Go to your mind. Seven, six, five, go to your mind. Four, three, two, one. You're inside of a large room in your mind, a room to store your thoughts now. There is perfect order in the universe. All life enhancing thoughts will come back in perfect order. Clear your Mind. <laughs> now it's good to know that you have a conscious and a subconscious, and that's good to know. So good. To and it's good to know now the conscious mind is free to drift and rest, rest and drift. The subconscious hears everything I am saying. I am talking to your subconscious. I now direct your subconscious to take you as deep as you need. Ten, nine, eight, go deeper. Seven, six, five, go deeper. Four, three, two, one, you are there, the right place, right now. So in a moment now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to imagine. I want you to begin to imagine, I want you to begin to imagine something that you like to do, that you do well. Something that you do well. Now I want you to imagine yourself doing that thing that you do, that you do well. Feel that. Feel what that feels like. Feel what it feels like to do something you do that you do well. Feel that. Feel that state. This is a state of excellence. Feel your excellence. Now I want you to take your thumb and your first finger of your non-dominant hand and squeeze them together and breathe excellence in. And exhale, release the fingers. Now squeeze together, inhale, breathe in, exhale, release the fingers. One more time, inhale, excellence, Exhale. Release the fingers. Open your eyes. Look right, left, straight ahead, and break your state. Now all you have to do if you wake up in a mood and you want to change your state, close your eyes for a minute, 
Just click your fingers together and breathe. And it will access that state of consciousness. We just put an anchor into your brain that that physical movement will access. Now we're going to take the other two techniques and we're going to stack them. Whenever we stack anchors, it makes it much more powerful. So the second technique is about creating a power image. And a power image is like our self-hypnosis suggestion, but it's like a picture of you in, a, in something that you feel powerful or that you want to feel powerful about. Something, a picture of you running on your very best day. A picture of you doing some kind of athletic movement that's important to you. So close your eyes and begin to allow your mind to re-enter that state. It's easy to do this. All you have to do is let go. And as you begin to allow yourself to let go even more now, I want you to bring up that picture. That picture of you doing that task as a powerful image. Now take your thumb and first finger, squeeze them together, breathe into the heart, exhale, release the fingers. Flash the image in your mind, click your fingers together, breathe, exhale, relax. One more time, flash the image in your mind, inhale, squeeze the fingers together, exhale, open the eyes, look right, left, straight ahead, break state. Okay, this process that I'm taking you through actually is instilling this in your mind. And you will find 